All right, I think I am live now. Hopefully. Let me see what it says on here. Can people see me? All right, I guess I'll just start talking. Hopefully, hopefully this is working. Um, hi, I am Matt Tavares, and I'm an author and an illustrator. Um, so for you guys that might not know what that means, an author is a person who makes books, who writes the words in the book, and an illustrator uh, is the person that makes the pictures. So I have a very cool job. Um, I get to spend most of my days uh, writing stories and drawing pictures and doing a lot of stuff that I loved to do when I was a kid. Um, stuff keeps popping up on my screen. I need to make sure this is actually working. If this is working and someone is watching me, if you could post a comment. I want to make sure I'm not talking to nobody. I've never done one of these before. Hmm. Hopefully it's working. Working. Thank you, Erica. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yes, I'm Matt Tavares. And um, I, I uh, first of all, I know I can't see you guys, but raise your hand if you like to draw. Hopefully there are some hands up. I love to draw. Um, and I feel very lucky that I get to spend most of my days doing this. Now, sometimes, usually this time of year, I, uh, I'm traveling the country doing presentations at schools. Um, right now, most schools are closed, so I can't be doing that, which, uh, which is sad. But um, in a time like this, I try to find uh, find the good things, you know, those little good things that I can focus on. And for me, um, one of those things is I, I've been spending more time with my family. It's nice, you know, my kids are home, my wife is home, she works at a school. So that's been nice. And also I have more time to draw. Um, and that's something I love to do. So I feel I feel pretty, pretty lucky for that. Um, and for you guys that like to draw, um, you know, we have a lot more free time right now, right? So So we can spend more time drawing. And today I'm pretty excited because we get to draw together. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to do a drawing together. I was looking through different books and different uh, things that we could draw. I have a book called Red and Lulu. Um, the main characters in Red and Lulu are cardinals. They're a pair of birds, uh, a pair of cardinals. Um, so when I was working on Red and Lulu, I drew a lot of birds. So we're going to do a drawing of Red, who is one of the main characters. You might, you might guess which one he is the red one, um, in Red and Lulu. And um, after that, I was thinking I could show you a few things. I'm in my studio right now. This is where I spend most of my time. This is where I make my books. So I could show you a couple things. And then at the end, if you guys have any questions, um, I was thinking I could answer a few questions. So you can write questions in, in the comments there. And after we're done drawing, I'll look through those and, and try to answer some questions. Uh, all right, so let's get started. I'm gonna grab my Sharpie. If you guys haven't already, this would be a good time to, to get a piece of paper, get a pencil or a crayon or whatever it is you like to draw with. Um, I'm gonna draw with a marker just because it's easier for you to see, I think. Um, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. All right, get a new piece of paper. Oh, before I start too, one, uh, just a couple drawing tips. Um, Probably my best drawing advice I can give you is when you're starting a picture, don't worry about all the little details at first. Um, I always like to start with big, simple shapes. And, um, and then I kind of carve into it. Uh, and the other thing is this, the first marks that I make when I draw a picture, I don't push down really hard. You know, if I'm drawing with, you know, if you're drawing with a crayon or a pencil or even a, a Sharpie, um, you can you can push down like really hard and make a dark line like that, or you can kind of just gently let it drag along the paper and make a lighter line. So these first marks I'm going to make, uh, they'll be lighter because these I'm not sure they're really in the right place. They're sort of just to get me started. Uh, so I'm going to get a fresh piece of paper here. So so we're going to draw a bird. Um, so for me, when I'm drawing a bird, right at the beginning, I'm not going to worry about getting every feather just right in the and the details on the beak or anything like that. I'm gonna start with a big, easy, simple shape. Um, so try to think what shape would you start with if you're gonna draw the body of a bird? 
I usually start with an oval. Um, so I'm going to just nice and easy on your piece of paper, just a nice big oval. We're not going to worry about getting it exactly perfect. It's just something to get started. So here is an oval. And I didn't spend a lot of time worrying about getting it just right. It's just something just to get some marks on my paper. Um, now, the body of a bird, it's like an oval, but then it's pointy at the tail end, right? So what's a shape that I could add to the oval to make it more pointy? I can't hear your answers, but you're probably saying a triangle, right? Because that's a good pointy shape. So I'm going to add a triangle uh, to this end here. So here's how you do that. More like a V. I'm not going to draw that side of the triangle because that's right in the middle of the bird. Um, so now we have an oval and a triangle. Now when I draw birds, there are a lot of triangles. Um, first, there's one other shape. What's a good shape for a head? Try to think of a good head shape. Probably anytime you draw a head, you start with a circle, right? So, um, so that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to draw a circle. All right, so now we have an oval and a triangle and a circle. Now, usually when I do this at schools, I only have like five minutes. So I fly through the whole thing and I give lots of advice. I'm going to try to slow down a little bit so you guys can, can keep up with me. Um, so, and again, nice and easy. I didn't worry about getting it just right. It's just, just to get me started. Um, I just kind of scribbled. So we've got an oval, circle for the head, and a, and a triangle. Now, what about the wings? Try to think of what the wings look like. Wings are, wings are weird because they're always moving. They make a lot of different shapes. But usually when I'm drawing wings, I usually start with more triangles. So I'm going to make a triangle going up this way and a triangle coming down this way. I'm making a very big bird. Hopefully it's nice and big on your screen. Um, and then think about the tail feathers. If the, uh, if the tail feathers on a bird are all spread out and they make one big shape, that's another triangle. So I'm going to make a triangle here, sort of going the other way. All right. Now how about the beak? Think about what shape the beak is. It's another triangle, right? I'm going to see if I can see comments over here. If people are answering, I want to make sure I can see them. Something about Big Bird there from Dave Bredricki. Nice. All right, so um, I'm going to make a triangle for the beak. And now cardinals, they have, I don't know if it's called the crown, they have this little tuft of feathers coming out the back of their head. Um, and that is another triangle. So now, um, so right now we've got an oval a circle, and a bunch of triangles. Can you guys, do you think you can draw an oval and a circle and a bunch of triangles? Hopefully you just did. Um, this is one of those things where I think drawing a bird might seem too complicated, but if you simplify it and draw these simple shapes, then, you, then you've got something to get started. So every time when I was working on Red and Lulu, every time I drew Red or Lulu, this is how I started. Sometimes their wings were in a different position, Sometimes they were flying the other direction or from a different angle, but it was always, I would draw an oval, a circle, a bunch of triangles, and then I start to build on it. Like, this isn't, this isn't done yet. Like, the head has to be attached to the body, right? So I'm going to add some lines here. I'm going to make a line coming from the, the head, kind of going down like that. So that's sort of like the neck. I don't know if a bird really has a neck, but that's, that connects the head and the body. Um, I'll do another one up here. I'm going to go over the back there. So now the head and the body are connected. So now it's starting to look a little more like a bird. Um, now the wings aren't just triangles, right? They have um, these big, beautiful feathers growing out of them. So I'm going to extend this shape. Now this, I made the bird too big for my paper, but I'm going to go make it go right off the edge. So that wing, you can't see the whole thing. This one, we'll go right down to the bottom here. So that gives me the shape of, of the whole wing. I'll give you guys a minute to, to catch up with that if that takes a minute. Um, like I said, usually I do this really fast because we only have a few minutes and another group of kids is coming in, but um, 
So now you've got the wing shape. And now, now I'm going to start to carve into it. I think of it like if I were a sculptor, I'd start with a big block of clay. First things I do, I'd probably like smush the clay and lop off a big section. But then at the end, I'd get my little carving tools and get into those little details. So, so now I'm going to start to draw the lines where the different feathers would go. And I'll do the same thing for the tail feathers. We've got just a big triangle here, but I'm going to divide that space up into a bunch of little feathers. And now I'm going to carve into it a little more to make them look not just like lines, but actual feathers. So you can see, I'll, I'll just kind of go over it. One thing to remember too is when you're drawing, don't worry about every mark being perfect. Sometimes I see kids draw and, um, and they spend a lot of time erasing, um, especially as kids get older. Like if I see high school kids draw, they make a mark they don't like. As soon as they make it, they're like, ah, oh, I gotta get, gotta get rid of that. Um, but when I'm drawing, a lot of my marks aren't quite right, but I just draw right over them. Um, sometimes you need those marks that aren't quite in the right place to figure out how you need to adjust it. You know, a lot of drawing is just measuring and then remeasuring. So here for these, these feathers, I'm going to add little details here. Like I'm not going to, I can't erase that oval. That'll still be there, but by drawing right over it, you don't really notice it after a while. And the other things, once, once I become more confident that the marks are in the right place, I make them darker. Remember those first marks I didn't push down very hard, but now I'm feeling like, all right, these are, these are in the right place. I can, I can push down harder and I can start to add details like that, the texture up there. Um, you can go over some of these lines and make them, make them stand out a little bit more. And if I'm going too fast, hopefully I'm not, but if I am, you can always go back. This video will be saved. So you can watch it again and, and, and try to do another drawing. Um, now, now we're getting into some of the little details, like the eye. That's just a little circle. So here is, here's the eye. Um, the, the beak I'm going to divide into half with a line. Now it's looking more like a bird, right? Now I'm going to make this red as opposed to Lulu. Uh, the male cardinal has sort of a mask. Um, so I'm going to make uh, this sort of shape here and then just kind of shade it in. So if you're drawing with a crayon or, or anything, just kind of, kind of fill in that little space and then it looks like a cardinal. Um, so whatever I'm drawing, I always start with, start with those big easy shapes and then um, slowly carve into it and then the details go last. Um, now I'm going to show you guys another little trick here um, in this picture. I want to make it look like red is flying over New York City. Um, and I'm going to show you a trick to, to help you make your picture look like there's space, like it's not just a flat piece of paper. Um, and there are a lot of ways to do that. But one way is just to remember the, the idea that when something is up close, it looks really big. Like if I get close to the camera right now, my head is really big on your screen, right? Uh, but then if something's far away, it looks small. Like now I'm way back here. Um, and I'm small. So, so that's a way that you can make your picture look like there's space. So right now red is really big in the picture. Um, I'm going to make some buildings in the distance. Um, now a building, I'm just going to make rectangles. You guys can draw rectangles. Um, so we're going to make some rectangles so over here. And this is where, you know, I can just use my imagination. Uh, I want it to look like New York City. So I'm going to make uh, a few different buildings here. A lot of buildings in New York City. Um, and you can just make them however you want. This is, I'm just making it up as I go. If this were for, like when I was working on Red and Lulu, I would look at pictures of New York City to try to make sure I was getting uh, everything right. I feel like all my buildings are a little slanted because I'm at a weird angle here. Um, now I want to make the Empire State Building. So over here, I'm going to make. Uh, Kind of that the steeple on the top of it there. And that's something that, then, then you can know that this is New York City. It's not just a bunch of random buildings or rectangles. Um, so there's the Empire State Building. 
Now just by making these buildings smaller, and I can make little details here, make little lines so it looks like there's windows. And just by making them smaller, hopefully it looks like red is way up close and these buildings are all kind of in the distance. So you can do that whether you're, you know, it doesn't have to be a bird in buildings, it can be a person in trees, or it can be anything. If you make something really big in your picture, um, and that looks like it's up close, and then you make something small, see if it can, it can look like there's, like there's space. One other way to make it look like there's space is to make one thing overlapping another thing. Um, like you see how, how red is in front of the Empire State Building, his wing kind of goes in front of the building. I can do that with clouds too, like if there's a cloud up here, make the cloud kind of disappear behind the bird. Do a cloud down here. Um, now a lot of times whenever I do a drawing in schools, kids are always like, draw the sun. Kids always want me to draw the sun. So I'm going to draw the sun. It'll be like peeking out from behind a cloud. A little glimmer of hope there. Um, now, I'm not going to add any color to my picture, but if you guys want to, um, this is sort of a coloring page now, right? You've got this whole picture of black lines. Um, if you want to, you can leave it just how it is, or if you want, you can take some crayons or whatever you like to color with. Um, you can color in the bird and color in the buildings and you know make a nice blue sky if you want and have some fun with it. Um, so I think I'll stop there with the picture. Um, I'm in my studio right now. This is where I make all my books. So um, I thought maybe I could show you some stuff. Um, usually when I do my, my presentations at schools, I don't have all my stuff with me. Uh, but here I've got, I've got my, my drawing table over here and, and all, my, all my artwork and everything. Um, so I'm going to turn my camera a little bit. You can see that's my, my wall of inspiration over there. I'm working on a graphic novel right now. It's going to be my first graphic novel and I'm very excited for it. Oh, wait a second, we have a visitor here. I thought you guys would wanna see um, one of my buddies, one of my, my friends who's here. This is Toga. Hi, Toga, say hi to everybody. This is one of our bunnies. We have two bunnies, Toga and Halo, and Toga is very fluffy. I think he's a little nervous. All right, I'll give Toga back. <laughs> nice little Toga appearance. All right, I'm going to show you a few things um, over here. I'll tilt this down a bit. That's my drawing table. Um, I got some stuff out here. Let's see. So I have a book called Dasher. This is what Dasher looks like. And I was going through my stuff, and I just wanted you to see, before I had the real book, I don't just sit down and write a book and have it look like this. This takes a long time. Um, I have this version of Dasher. That looks a little different, right? See the two together? Um, before I make the real book, I have all these ideas and I need to figure out how it's all going to work. And I do these practice pictures called sketches. So you can see these are some of my sketches. And I, and I put it together in a little version of the book just so I can see what it's like to read through and, and see how it all works. Um, one thing I wanted to show you too, even though Dasher, you know, it's a picture book, you can read it in probably 10 minutes. Um, I have this whole stack of drafts of Dasher. Like this is all just for that little little book. Um, and if you give a give a little look at that, you can see I have all these little called thumbnail sketches. These little little drawings on there. Those are just ideas that I'm I'm thinking about things I could draw. Little notes to myself on on on, I, on changes I want to make. Um, so for every book, there's all this work that goes into it before you see uh, the real thing. And then I have. Uh, you know, before we print the real book, um, I get these in the mail. These are called proofs. Uh, we just drew red in the Empire State Building, so I thought it'd be cool to show this. This is the proof for the page in Red and Lulu where red is flying around the Empire State Building. Um, here's another proof from Red and Lulu. Thought it'd be cool to show some of that stuff. Um, now, if anyone has any questions, maybe we can do a few minutes of questions. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, drawing drawing red. And also, when um, if you want to, if your parents want to, uh, I'd love to see some of your artwork. So if your parents want to post them 
on you know Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or wherever. Um, I would love to see them. I'm going to put up here. Um, I was thinking maybe people could could uh, if you do this hashtag draw with Matt. I'm going to turn that so you can see that. Um, then I can see them, and or you can tag me. I'm at Tavares Books on pretty much every social media um, platform. I'm really just Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I don't do Snapchat and all those new ones. I can't keep up with all those. Um, but I would love to uh, to see some of the artwork that that you guys did for this. Um, so let's see. We've got some questions here. Um, sorry, I keep moving my my camera. Um, Question, what was your first book? Cool thing is I'm right here in my studio. I can get, I'll be right back. I'm right over here. All right, my first book was Zachary's Ball. The cool thing about this book is when I first made it, this was a school project. I didn't know this was ever gonna be a real book uh, that any people would ever read. This is just something I made in school. I was in college. I was older than, than most of you guys probably are right now, but, um, just like you, you guys in school, you draw pictures, you write stories. Um, that's what I did when I was a kid. And then I made this book in college. Uh, but then I found a publisher who liked it, who told me they wanted to turn it into a real book. So that's how I got started as an author illustrator. I actually have this here. This is, um, this is the book I put together when I was in college. Um, and it's just photocopies. I went to the store and made copies. Um, I actually called it Sebastian's Ball originally. I changed the name to Zachary. Um, so I have all here. Now, now this, this nice cloth cover, I made that with a pillowcase. I took a pillowcase from my dorm and I put it over some cardboard and I made this nice cloth hard cover. Uh, but this is, this is the first version of Zachary's Ball. Well, that's how I got started. All right, we've got more questions. What is your favorite book that you have drawn? Um, it's always hard to say. I feel like my newer books are, are usually my favorite. I feel like, I um, actually have a few books right here. Maybe Dasher, that one might be my favorite, or Red and Lulu, the one that we were we were drawing from. Um, I had a lot of fun with those. What art supplies do you use? I use a lot of different art supplies. Um, I did a couple books, like, like Zachary's Ball, I did just with pencil. So that's just pencil on paper. Um, for books like Dasher and Red and Lulu, I use mostly watercolor. And I also use a different kind of paint called gouache, which is watercolor, but you can't. it's not transparent. It's called opaque watercolor. Um, so I use mostly paint and pencils. Um, for my new book that just came out, it's called A Ben of All Trades. This is the first book where the final pictures are actually done on the computer. Um, I did pencil drawings and then scanned them in, and then I did all the color in Photoshop. Um, and that's something I've been practicing for years, but I finally am comfortable enough with it that I, I tried it in a book. Uh, it's a fun way to paint, because if you mess up, you can just do it over. Where with real paint, um, it's a little harder. Uh, but, but I love working both ways. Uh, so I still, I still use real paint and real pencils, but then I like to draw on the computer sometimes too. Do you have any other drawing videos? I think I do have a couple drawing videos. Um, they might be on my YouTube channel that I, it's mostly just book trailers and a few, a few drawing things, but I think I'll do some more. I think over these next few weeks, I'm gonna do, I'll do more of these because this, this was kind of fun. Um, looking for some more questions. How are you so good? That's a nice question. Thank you. <laughs> um, seriously, though, just practice. Like, I've been doing this since I was a little kid. Like, my parents say, even when I was two years old, I love to draw. And I think, you know, for anyone that wants to be good at drawing or good at writing or good at anything, you know, you're not just going to automatically be great at it. You have to, you have to slowly, you know, the more you do it, the slow, you slowly get better at it. Um, and for me, when I was a kid, I loved to draw. So I never looked at it like, Oh, I've got to go practice drawing, got to do my hour of drawing practice. It was just something I liked to do. So if you love to draw, it's easy to spend a lot of time drawing. You know, even if you're watching cartoons or, you know, like, like these days, we have a little more free time than we usually do. So, so maybe you can, you can just grab some paper and crayons and have fun and just draw whatever you feel like drawing. Um, it's kind of, a, kind of a gift right now, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if you want to be a good piano player, You've got to practice. You have to spend a lot of time practicing, and I think drawing is, is the same kind of thing. Uh, let's see, about how long does it take you to, to create a book? I end up doing about a book a year, so they take me a while. 
Um, and that includes, you know, some days that I'm, I'm traveling around doing school visits or traveling for, for book tour stuff when a book comes out. Um, but, it, but it ends up about, uh, a, about one book per year. And most of it is the illustrating. My, my pictures just take me a long time. Uh, let's see. Someone saying they're so happy. EJ Morell is saying they're so happy that Dasher is a girl. Yes, that I think is, is a cool thing. We figured that Rudolph is sort of the most famous reindeer of all, and, and he's a boy. So we thought it would kind of make sense that, that there should be a, a famous girl reindeer. And the other thing I learned is that um, male reindeer tend to shed their antlers in the winter, in December. And female reindeer keep their antlers all winter long. So, so my editor and I figured it kind of makes sense that at least some of these reindeer, they always, they always have antlers when I see them in pictures or, or movies or anything. So it would make sense that some of them are probably girls. So we thought it would make sense that Dasher should be a girl. All right. Hi, Melissa and Will and Jack. I see Melissa's question there. Can you post a video where you color in a picture? That's a good idea. I will do that. I'll do that sometime. I don't think I'm going to color in this one right now, but um, but yeah, I'll do another video where I do I do some color. That'd be cool. Good idea. All right. Thank you, Laurel Parker. Nice to see you on there. Easton wants to draw Dasher too. You know, maybe I'll do another one of these where we draw Dasher. I think that's a good idea. Um, I don't think I'll do it right now because it's almost been a half hour. I don't know if people want to draw for that long right now. But, um, but I think that's a good idea. I'll do a Dasher one some other time. Um, what are your favorite things to draw? And what, what do you, what are the toughest things to draw? Oh, that's a good question. My favorite things to draw, for a long time, I think my favorite thing to draw was people. Um, and now I feel like people are probably also the toughest thing to draw because we are so used to looking at people that if you draw a person badly, people notice it right away. Like if, if it just isn't, if the, the face isn't put together right, or if, you know, the, the, the posture is wrong. Um, I really think that birds have maybe become my favorite thing to draw. I loved making Red and Lulu. I think it was so, um, they're such fun characters because they can go anywhere. Like I could draw Red flying. Um, just, I use my imagination, try to think of all the places he could fly, you know, just thinking um, he could, he could be going around the Empire State Building. And I could just use my imagination and and, uh, and use interesting perspectives and points of view. Um, and there's a little more, they're a little more forgiving to draw where uh, it's, it's kind of a, a simple shape as opposed to getting a, getting a person's face just right. So maybe, maybe I'm just getting, as I get older, it's <laughs> the, the time it takes to draw people is, it takes a little more patience, but, um, but I do, I do still like drawing people and, but birds, birds are a lot of fun. Let's see. What is your favorite animal to draw? I guess that's, that's birds. Yeah, because they can fly. I think it's it, it gives me all these different interesting things I can do that for those of us that are, are stuck to the ground, you know, we can't we can't go some of the places that birds can go. So that that, that makes it a lot more fun to draw. Uh, let's see, message from, from Carly. What book was the hardest to create? Um, probably, I did a book, I illustrated a book called Lady Liberty, a biography. Um, it was written by Doreen Rappaport, and that was my first nonfiction book. Um, so I didn't even write that one, but that was probably the hardest book I've worked on because that was the first time I um, I really had to make sure every little detail in every picture was historically accurate. And I never really had to do that before. So it kind of, I couldn't just be in my own little world drawing. I had to check every little thing, um, and that was hard. Um, I had to do a lot of research. You know, that's when I'm finding information about about everything I'm, I'm drawing so that one that one took me a while um let's see have you visited all the settings of your stories from ej um i have not visited all the settings um some of my stories you know sometimes either it took place too long ago it doesn't look the same anymore and i have to rely on pictures or artwork or uh, whatever i can find um sometimes it's just too far i can't get there um I have traveled quite a bit for my books, like for, for crossing Niagara, I went to Niagara Falls and did some research there and took a bunch of pictures and videos. Um, for growing up Pedro, I went to the Dominican Republic. Um, it was sort of a family vacation slash research trip where I, I, I got to see, you know, the places where Pedro lived when he was a kid. Um, yeah, whenever I can, I like to go to the place where my story took place. 
All right, message from Gretchen. How do you get your ideas for your books? Ideas are weird, you know? Sometimes they just pop into your head from nowhere. Sometimes I'm, you know, I feel like when I'm really trying to come up with an idea, I don't. Um, some of my ideas just come from things that I'm interested in. Like I love, uh, for a while I was reading a lot about the history of baseball. So that's where a lot of my, my nonfiction baseball biographies came from. Um, you know, just things that I like. Um, but sometimes different ideas combine. Like for Red and Lulu, I had one idea to do a nonfiction book about the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Um, just, you know, how they find the tree every year, how they get it to the city, all that stuff. And then I had this whole different idea um, just from seeing cardinals in my yard and seeing how there, whenever you see that bright red male cardinal, there's usually uh, the female cardinal is nearby. And I got this idea, what if they became separated? And what if one had to try to find the other? Um, so at one point, I don't even remember how it happened, but just those ideas combined. Um, that combined with the, the story about the tree and it became Red and Lulu. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is just writing down. Anytime I think of something, I want to make sure I write it down so I don't forget it. Because you never know what little what little scrap of an idea might might turn into to something. Um, Sarah asks, do you ever use Procreate? I never have. I've heard it's such a cool program. I don't have an iPad Pro, so I haven't. Um, I, I've kind of doodled and played around on, on a friend's uh, iPad Pro once. It seems amazing. But... Um, I do have a Cintiq, which is a, a tablet that I use Photoshop on, um, so it's similar. But um, but yeah, I'd like to try uh, Procreate too. That looks pretty awesome. What inspires you to come up with your your book ideas? Sort of like I was saying, it's um, you know ideas are all over the place. Um, I think the biggest thing is just for me paying attention and keeping my eyes open and uh, and writing it down if I ever get one. All right, um, thank you all for for drawing with me. I hope you had fun. Um, again, I'll, I'll show this this here. So um, if you do want to share your artwork, I would love to see it. I'll show you my my bird again. I'd love to see uh, what yours look like. And, and every one's is going to look different because, you know, our ovals are going to be a little different and the circles are different. And, um, but that's cool. That's uh, and I'd love to see what you came up with. And I hope you all have a fun day and, and uh, hopefully we can we can draw together again soon. Thank you.